Let's go over two examples involving rates of change. They're both word problems from our textbook. Here's the first one. Um, we have this function d of r, which gives population density in hundreds of people per square mile when we are within r miles of the center of a town. So I just started by sketching what this would look like. This is the center of the town. And if you live within our miles of the center, well, you live somewhere in this circle. So maybe let's start by thinking about units because in both this problem and the next problem, it really helps us to get it right if we make sure every, all the units are working out. So at the very beginning, like I mentioned, let's think about units. The units for D of R This is in hundreds of people. And then per miles squared. Okay, this is what it reads, well, right here, hundreds of people per square mile. And then if we think about this circular being within our miles, the area here is pi r squared, and its units are miles squared. And just thinking about those two things, we are ready for part A, because part A, we want T of R to be the total number of people in hundreds who live within our miles of the city. And if you notice, looking at this, if we, just thinking units, if we have hundreds of people per mile squared times miles squared, we will have units, hundreds of people. And that's what we want for the units of T of R. And so T of R is pi R squared times D of R. Okay, that will give us, I'll write it, hundreds of people for the units. Let's finish translating the first part of the paragraph because this will help us as we move into part B. So what we see here, 100 people per square mile within five miles and 350 people Per square mile within seven miles. This is telling us D of five and D of seven, but we have to be a little bit careful because D of R is in hundreds of people per mile squared, and what's underlined in red is just people per mile squared. So what do we know here? We know that D of five is one and D of seven is 3.5. And from this, this will help us, as I said, as we move into part B. Average rate of change from the interval five to seven, we want T of seven minus T of five divided by seven minus five well, t of 7 is 49 pi times 3.5, and d of 5 is 25 pi times 1, and then we divide by 2. When you use a calculator, let me see what I get, 230.12. This would be in hundreds of people per mile, or you could just move the decimal place over two and you would get in people per mile, but it's fine. Everything, we started off with hundreds of people, so I will work in hundreds of people per mile. Okay, 
If we move on to C, what do we have here? Approximate T of six. Uh, using what we have done. Well, see, the issue is we don't have a formula for T of R. We don't have a formula for D of R. But what we can use is the following. Let's do T of five, which is in um, hundreds of people. And then we can add, oh, I'll write it like this. We can add this, which is the average rate of change on this interval. So this is in hundreds of people per mile and then times one mile. That would get us to six, right? But this would be in overall hundreds of people. And if we add the two, our units is still in hundreds of people. Okay, so let's do that now. T of five is 25 pi. And then we add this to 30.12. Again, this is a calculator calculation. I have it's about 308.66. And this is in hundreds. So if I wanted the number of people, well, I would just move the decimal place over two, but this is in hundreds of people. I just left it in hundreds because from the beginning, D of R and T of R, they are in hundreds of people. Okay, so this is number one here, here, and here. And now let's move on to the next example. We're traveling, or Alice is traveling 100 miles to a conference. In the first 50 miles, she travels at a constant rate. And the second 50 miles, she travels at a constant rate. Okay, and then we're asked some questions, but what we see immediately in both of these here, for both A and B, the entire 100 mile trip, she wants to average 50 miles per hour. So it's important to think about time here, and this will help us out. If you are traveling 50 miles per hour on average, and your whole trip is 100 miles, it's taking you two hours. And the way you can really think about that is 50 miles per hour times two hours will give us 100 miles, okay? Now, very nice, part A. We're told the first 50 miles is 40 miles per hour, so let's figure out how much time that's going to take. And then because the total trip is two hours, we will know how much time she must use for the second 50 miles. And that can help us calculate a rate. Okay, so 50 miles. And then she's traveling 40 miles per hour. Again, let's think units to make sure this makes sense. We have miles divided by miles per hour, and if you think fractions, you invert multiply, we would have miles over miles, and then times hours. So the units here is in hours. And in fact, this is 1.25 hours, okay? And so the second half must be traveled in 0.75 hours and she will travel 50 miles in 0 0.75 this is miles hours this gives us this speed that she will travel in the second 50 miles and when you divide here we get this is approximately 66.67 and miles per hour. So this is the answer to part A. Now we move on to part B. It's exact same idea, except the speed in the first 50 miles is 
different. So the first 50 miles, her speed is 25 miles per hour. Again, the units here, altogether we have hours, so two hours. Well, <laughs> what does that mean about the second half? The second half must be completed in two minus two hours, which is zero hours. Now, how are you gonna drive 50 miles in zero hours? This is not possible unless you could just go like this and be there. I don't think we're considering that. So this trip, part B, is not possible. And this would be our answer for part B, okay? Okay, well, this was two examples, and thank you very much.